My name is Robert Bonavito, New Jersey Forensic Accountant. This video is part of a series of videos where I discuss forensic accounting topics for educational purposes only. If this was a litigated matter, I would take a different approach, have different conclusions based on different facts and circumstances. Today's topic is uh, understanding weighted average cost of capital. Sounds kind of complicated. Um, uh, really not that complicated when you, when you break it down. What is weighted average cost of capital? I mean, cost of capital is, is it's, it's, under, it's important to understand what your capital cost. Even if you have a small business, you're investing money and time in that business. And with some of the more sophisticated companies, you know, you'll have um, uh, stockholder equity and long-term debt. And when we do valuations of these companies, we have to figure out what the way to cost of capital is. And I have a pretty simplified uh, example here, so it's easy to understand, I think, anyway. But uh, a company has two sources of capital, uh, usually stockholders, uh, uh, you know, uh, investments, which is paid in capital, for, that's when they buy the stock from the company, uh, and debt. Uh, you take on long-term debt. Uh, small businesses usually have both, but they don't realize it. Yeah, uh, um, uh, you know, someone will start a business, they'll put you know, $2,000 in the business um, and uh, perhaps they'll go to the bank and get a line of credit or something like that. And that's their capital to start the business up. And uh, the reason you have two types of capital is remember, and if you have debt, when you pay the debt, the interest expense is deductible. So if you're in the 40% tax bracket and the uh, interest rate is 10%, um, your, your, your effective interest rate is only going to be 6% because you have a tax break from the U.S. government. They're paying some of the interest for you. So really the debt is not costing you 10%, it's costing you 6%. And the other big advantage to debt is um, when you buy an asset, you know, it will increase in value based on inflation. So for example, if I was to buy a, a warehouse and inflation was, let's say, 3% 3, 3 or 2%, that warehouse is not depreciating, hopefully. It's, in, it's increasing in value. You know, it's kind of like, you know, when your parents bought a house and they bought it for $10,000 and they sold it 30 years later for $300,000. That is inflation increasing the value of the asset. But what happens to the debt? Okay, so um, if you bought a house for $150,000 and let's say you took a, a let's, say, let's say you bought a house for $300,000 and you took a $150,000 loan. Well, the advantage to the debt is that the $300,000 house is hopefully appreciating, which hasn't been the case lately, but it will be going up in value. The next year it will be worth $310,000 or $320,000. And the debt is staying the same. It's in nominal terms, but the terms, it's actually decreasing in value because you're paying it down. But the $150,000 of debt doesn't increase like the value of the house, right? Because that's in nominal terms, but the inflation is affecting the assets. So that's why people borrow money, um, be, because there are a couple advantages to it. And then uh, the capital portion here is um, that's the investment that the shareholders are putting. When you buy stock, the company's taking that money and they're putting it in their bank, but it's also going into uh, capital. And the big difference between debt and equity, besides what I've told you, is that Debt is observable and objective, okay? Because remember, when you take a loan out, the bank is going in and looking at you and, and, and trying to evaluate what kind of risk you are. And they give you a rate. So you can observe the rate, and it's objective because the bank is comparing you to other people. So that, that, that rate that they're giving you is a, a, a good indication of how risky they think you are. We're, we're, we're uh, capital is not observable and not objective because you don't know, I mean, I'm investing in this company, maybe I want 10%, maybe I want 20%, and this is where it gets kind of complicated and we're not gonna go into that detail, but it's important to understand those differences. Um, and of course, the other thing is with capital, what are the shareholders getting? They're getting appreciation when they sell their stock and they're getting a dividend. So, you know, both have plus and minuses, but the big uh, uh, problem with debt is that it makes you more risky because you're saying to yourself, well, Bob, if debt is such a good deal, why don't I just borrow money instead of taking stockholders, you know, stake, taking equity because the rates are obviously a lot lower than what stockholders want, you know, 6% versus 10 or 15 or 
because debt makes you much more risky, okay? And you could see that when the, the last downturn in 2008, a lot of companies were wiped from the face of the earth because they had high le debt loads. So it's great to have debt when you're calculating weighted average cost of capital, but debt increases the risk, which means the capital that the stockholders are gonna be putting in, they're gonna want a lot more for that capital. Um, and uh, you know, if you look at companies, they spend a great amount of time figuring out what the balance should be between debt and capital. If you look at pharmaceutical companies, they don't usually have long-term debt. And why is that? Because the pharmaceutical company sales are like this. They have a product, they make a lot of money, it goes off patent, it goes down. You know, they don't want that risk on their balance sheet. They have good cash flow, so they usually don't need it. But some industries and some professions, you don't want debt. Because when things go down, you're not going to be able to make the debt payment. And guess what? Stockholders don't get paid, right? The debt holders do get paid, usually. You know? So you know, they have a claim on the assets, just like the house we talked about. They have a claim on the house. So there's an interplay between capital and debt that you have to, we, you know, as a valuation expert, we have to really have a good understanding and uh, calculate uh, the effect. But let's just give you a couple quick uh, examples here. You know, stockholders invest in the company because they believe that they will, that, you know, why do they do that? Why do they invest? Because they believe they're going to get a dividend and capital appreciation that will exceed the bank that the rate gives. You know, a bank, like a bank will give them 3.5%. Well, maybe they want 11%, so they'll invest in the company, you know, and hopefully they'll get their 11%. Uh, banks will loan money to companies because they will earn more than they're paying their customers. This is obvious. What are you getting in the banks now? Uh, you know, one-tenth of 1%. But if you go to take a loan, they're going to charge you six. That's six to one. That's a lot, okay? So they're, they're willing to lend at a lower rate than a stockholder would want because they're borrowing at a much lower rate. Um, and then, uh, you know, uh, banks pay, uh, you know, 3% on uh, CDs and low money at 6. So, you know, basically th there's 100% profit here. But it's a lot, a lot more because if you go to any town, the nicest building in a lot of towns is the bank. And why is that? Maybe the post office sometimes is second or third or library. But the reason the bank is one of the nicest and has the best location is because the, the, the rates they're earning are, are, are pretty impressive, especially now. Um, so let's just do a simple example here. Uh, capitalization rate for equity is 11% and debt is 3. Remember, the debt is a lot, the rate on the debt is a lot more than the, the stockholders would expect. So what is the weighted average cost of capital that I would use for this company? Well, it's 11. Let's, let's assume that the equity was $1,000 and the debt was $1,000. And I would just weight those. In this case, it's 1 to 1. So it's 11 plus 3 is 14. I would take half my capitalization rate is 7%. Now, if I got rid of the debt, it would be 11%. If I got rid of the equity, it would be 3 But remember, you, de debt is not a free ride, okay? Uh, if I increase the debt to like 10000 instead of $1,000, well, the cap, the equity investors would want a lot more than 11% because now it's a much more risky company. So that's a brief overview of cost of, uh, of uh, weighted average cost of capital. If you have any questions on this video, feel free to give me a call or email me.